All right. Uh, welcome once again. Let's begin with a word of prayer. I would like to request uh, maybe uh, Prabhakar from Bangalore to uh, lead us in a word of prayer, please. Sure, Pastor. Father, we come to your presence, O Lord. Father, we thank you for this day. Father, we thank you. Your word is your mercy is a new every morning, Father. We receive it, Lord. Father, here we are. We come with an expectant heart, O Father Jesus. Lord, teach us, O Father, and help us to grasp it, Holy Spirit. Grant us your teaching, Father. Grant us your grace, O Father. We love you, Father. May it change our life. May it transform our life. May it draw us close to you, Father. Help us to represent you well. In Jesus' name we pray, Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhakar. Um, so what we can do is, uh, in the last class I was talking about how to really go about hearing from God. And we talked of the three-step process. Um, so I was wondering if we should continue uh, with hearing from each of you what you have received yesterday. So I'll give us a couple of minutes to do that. If there was something that you wanted to share and you couldn't, then maybe you can share that now. And uh, then you know I'll, I'll continue with our uh, chapter here. So a few more moments, if at all you couldn't you know, post your uh, word from God on the chat or something. So yeah, please feel free to do that. Okay, if not, we could uh, see whether, you know, we can we can have a couple of minutes towards the end. But once again, we can practice what we are uh, studying about. So let me put um, the, uh, the content here. We're talking about hearing from God. We're talking about uh, perceiving from the spirit, you know, what God is really uh, telling us. So we've seen how when we pray when we desire when we ask god and yesterday was uh, it, you know a very good opportunity though um, we did it online and we did it for a very short uh, span of time we all understood that the holy spirit is inside each of us and he carries the gifts uh, i remember a couple of us uh, may uh, one person had posted on the chat saying, I'm not able to see anything. But don't worry about it because the Holy Spirit is very much inside. And we can ask for these gifts to be activated in us. And every believer can manifest all the gifts of the Spirit. So it's just a matter of um, asking the Holy Spirit to release the gifts and for us to step out in faith. So the more we do it, the more often we do it, we will understand that you know we are able to uh, grasp how exactly the Spirit of God works uh, with these gifts. So just talking about a few uh, other things here. When we say the gifts of the Spirit, uh, we must not ju just limit it to the church or the ministry context because uh, the prophetic can be for any occasion even when we are going about our everyday lives even when we are going about our uh, work uh, at let's say you know the marketplace those of us who are involved in a job or uh, something else so uh, to be open at all times is crucial when we want to hear from God. So we can use it um, in every situation and to solve problems of all kinds, uh, not just, you know, problems that have to do with uh, the spiritual ones. I don't know if I've shared this with our class here, but uh, there was once at work that, you know, something needed to get done fast. And that was my experience. I've experienced God's um, you know, God speaking to me in different ways, but not uh, 
you know in in this particular way so this had to do with some data data analysis and uh, you know not that i was good at it i had very basic uh, knowledge however uh, at a time when a lot needed to be completed uh, i remember saying uh, because i was under a lot of pressure and uh, it was uh, it was overnight uh, that night in i think it was uh, in a dream that i saw some formulae uh, and i saw exactly how and this was uh, work on an excel sheet so i i just got the clarity you know you need to copy this paste this do it like this do it like that and before that i was taking a lot of time to work on that particular data but um, this got done in a matter of hours you know i had calculated uh, a couple of weeks to complete this task but it got done in a couple of hours and this was at my workplace and uh, i i cannot forget what happened because obviously i know that it wasn't me and god had uh, really helped me with that um, you know that information that i required at my workplace so what i'm saying is uh, we can trust god it could it could be at the workplace it could be you know you're out uh, shopping and then you you really need god's guidance on something even buying a gift for somebody and you're wondering lord uh, how can i bless this person what is the need in their lives uh, how how can they know you through what i am going to gift them uh, it's it's just about us depending on god and trusting god for uh, any situation and uh, nothing is really small you know we can bless people at all times so we can do that so we can uh, trust god in every uh, situation and whatever challenge that we are facing now prophesying in small group settings we've talked about it we saw how uh, you know paul talks about mm-hmm, doing things in an orderly and a decent manner so in the exercise of the gifts of the spirit in first corinthians chapter 4 you know, he teaches us that we can all prophesy one by one so um, that gives a chance for people to minister or serve uh, and he also talks about how people can judge the prophetic word so that way there is safety in a small group setting and wherever possible you know in our churches in our fellowships we can we can start out in this way and it it is really helpful to build confidence and another thing is that it's a safe environment for a lot of us we may not be comfortable to go up front and uh, you know from the stage to to share okay this is what i think god is saying uh, but we can begin in this way and uh, in a small group setting you know there can be correction there can be encouragement and all of that so it's really valuable uh, we are saying that uh, the gifts of the spirit are meant to be used for edification okay and not for destruction and condemnation so we're already um, quite clear on the fact that this is to the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit is for the edification of the body uh, so we are here to build up and uh, we must consider that in first corinthians 14 26 uh, paul writes he says how is it then brethren whenever you come together each of you has a psalm has a teaching has a tongue has a revelation has an interpretation let all things be done for edification so it's like getting excited uh, even about our fellowship uh, and before we come in there just imagine if everyone came with something to bless others with it may not be a material thing but you know we're talking about a, a psalm or a teaching a word of encouragement that we are bringing uh, to bless others so we can begin to practice this the more we begin to practice this you know the the easier the flow of the prophetic is and you know you, you and i don't have to wait for a session every day we can just practice and say god release the gifts of the spirit through me today that uh, let everyone participate um so 
we can get very hung up on um, you know ourselves and uh, let's say we get we become familiar with how the spirit is working through us in a setting i i might be the one who's always jumping up and saying okay i have a word i have a word let me say let me say but instead of that uh, the way that paul encouraged the congregation to function in the prophetic gift is give everybody a chance okay because god is working through everyone so one by one all can prophesy one by one so we can uh, have a you know a format is very formal but you know the the practice of uh, doing this in a proper way in any given setting so if you're leading uh, a morning prayer session before your su- sunday service then you can figure out what would be the best way to uh, have people prophesy so you can set an order there and say okay fine you know let, we'll first have the prayer and then after that the last 5 minutes before we wrap up if you have a word from god then you know, please raise your hands you can release it so then people do it one by one and it's done or let's say in a church setting now the service is going on uh, how do you want the ministry of the gifts of the spirit to be done uh, you might pick a slot during the service where you say okay the leaders you may want to call the leaders up and say okay during this time if there is a word that god has given you please go ahead and release it so in an orderly way one by one so that uh, people can listen they can uh, give heed to what god is speaking so in this manner things can be organized uh, also to um, follow instructions we want to manifest the gifts of the spirit in an orderly way and so uh, you know earlier i don't know about uh, all of you but i had uh, a pretty good exposure to all forms of worship because uh, both my parents are from different denominations so you know sometimes i would uh, my i would go with my father sometimes i would go with my mother and my mother you know later on um, she from a more uh, i mean she came from a like a lutheran sort of a um, you know church uh, background but she w- was inclined to the pentecostal kind of worship so she used to take us for meetings like that so having been exposed to things like that for me when i thought about the gifts of the spirit or speaking in tongues or prophesying it was it it had to be dramatic <laughs> if it was not dramatic then it's not from god you know uh, some people joke and say that you know uh, people prophesying will be like jumping and maybe even hanging from the fans you know so uh, it had to be like that uh, but not necessarily you know it ca- things can be if you recall the last uh, class we said that uh, the spirit of a prophet is subject to the prophet so one is very much in control of themselves and how they want to deliver the message so one can do it even today you know you have some people who shake and um, you know uh, scream in order to 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 manifest the gift of the spirit now that's how they want to do it to get someone's attention yeah i, I guess that's okay uh, but everyone can do it the way they want to and uh, and so we can we can decide but here's the instruction from paul he said first corinthians 14 and verse 40 let all things be done decently and in order so whichever manner we want to uh, manifest the gifts we can we can avoid confusion and um, uh, do it in a in a way that the manifestations are received well received by the people so we can be mindful about that and uh, these uh, these sessions where the spirit of god is poured out it need not be a chaotic you know a chaotic uh, thing uh, and you know we can we can actually understand that yes i i do recognize that uh, many many a time like if you look at acts chapter 2 and the spirit was poured out and people were speaking in tongues and it was not under control in that sense you know that is understandable when the spirit of god is leading us in a certain way but what i'm saying is to uh, the extent possible 
uh, you and I can uh, can control our way of delivering the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit. Okay, so uh, so basically, you know, refrain from causing confusion. Refrain from uh, also, you know, sometimes the thing is uh, that we want to draw attention. Okay, from the way that we are delivering uh, the message. But, you know, you see the motivation there is not correct. So then we can refrain from things like that and uh, ensure that, uh, you know, God is the center and the edification of the people uh, is the primary goal in what is being done. Okay. And uh, uh, also, when it comes to ministering uh, through prophecy, we have to be open to being judged and corrected. So this, you know, we've already said, and uh, it shouldn't be taken as a surprising thing or, you know, something that uh, is unbiblical because uh, once someone has said, you know, that says the Lord, um, no correction or, uh, you know, nothing, the judging of the prophecy is not expected. And uh, I think particularly it happens uh, in the body of Christ um, when people don't know much about the word, you know, what the word says about prophecy. Uh, I know that a lot of people have been disappointed. They've heard prophets and they've said uh, it never happened. Like, come on, all these great prophets have said. So, yeah, great prophets, I understand by experience, we val validate people as great prophets. But uh, the prophecy, every prophecy needs to be judged. Okay, it's it's not so much that you're judging the 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 man of God or the woman of God, but it's the word. You know, is this word in line with what God is saying? So we usually use this. I, we always, at least, uh, I've heard this uh, told to me, and I still practice it, and I. Uh, suggest this to people. You know, when you hear a prophecy, shelve it. Okay, shelve it simply means you're not rejecting it, but you put it on a shelf, like you kept it there, and you start praying about it. Okay, and then you you uh, also see whether God gives you a confirmation in uh, through the word or in His own way uh, to you. And then you know when it's when it is confirmed, you pick it up and you kind of embrace it. And you know that, hey, God is going to do this in my life. So that's the best way to receive a prophecy. Bible says, do not despise prophecies. So when somebody is giving a word, uh, whoever that is, in fact, whoever that is. Because you see, even when you look at the Old Testament, God spoke through a donkey. Okay. Um, so uh, basically, my point is, God can speak through anyone at any time in any way. Uh, I have to be open to it, but there is an element of judging the word that has been presented to me. So the best thing is to do is, if I'm not confident about embracing what somebody said, you know, maybe someone is saying that, uh, I see that God is taking you to you know, Australia, and you never thought about it. Just put it on the shelf and keep praying. You know, keep keep going about your life. Uh, maybe at some point God will confirm it and say, "Yeah, you know, I have a, I have something for you to do there." And then you're finally in agreement, and you actually end up going there. So, all prophecy is to be judged. Okay. Now let's move on to this next chapter here. This is also a very very important and crucial uh, chapter that talks about uh, the sense or, or the senses of our spirit man to hear from God. Now, when we uh, study about human beings or the way God has created uh, a human being, we are tripartite or there are three parts that make all of us. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.23, when Paul wrote to the Thessalonians, you know, he said something like, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now we do have parallel scriptures that confirm 
that we have a spirit we do have a body and we have a soul you know that is also part of our constitution now paul kind of sums it up in this passage and he says your whole spirit soul and body so there you have it you know three three components of every human being now why why is this important because in scripture we see the description of the core of our being um as the spirit okay uh, and we know when we are born again it's our spirit man who is completely transformed in the old testament you would find words like uh, the heart you know or the spirit uh used interchangeably to talk about the core of a human being okay um so it means the same thing it means the spirit of a person in the new testament you know, paul uses terms like the inner man the inner man so uh we have that understanding okay that the spirit is the uh, the main or the core of we yeah. are there's also the soul part of us you know the soul is us, uh, our uh, mind will and our emotions now we know that uh, this is the psychological part of it part of us it is also um, you know the the term suke which is used to describe it that you know we could go into uh, each uh, each part in detail but that's not our intention here so you know we we are moving forward so we have the uh, uh, we have the um, uh, spirit we have the soul and we also have the body now body we understand sometimes it's referred to um, as the tent uh, the the vessel that that we need to possess in order to live our lives here on the earth you know the moment you're done with the body um the person continues to exist you know the spirit is not annihilated or destroyed it continues to live but jesus taught about heaven and hell you know depending on uh, whether we have we have uh, accepted the work of christ uh, here on the earth so uh, the human spirit is it uh, it it is eternal in that sense but the body can be destroyed now uh, the bible also talks about flesh flesh has to do with the uh, evil desires of our uh, uh, soul and our body okay so that's a, a little bit of an a uh, little bit of a background uh, about what makes us as as individuals now what is the spirit being spoken of here so the spirit being the core of who we are is also uh, that part of us that um, is created in such a way that it can communicate with god so you know god uh, tends to minister to our spirit primarily not that he doesn't minister to our soul and body but primarily it happens in our spirit man now um, there are couple of passages you know, that uh, we can look at where proverbs 20 and verse 27 it says the spirit of the man is the lamp of the lord searching all the inner depths of his heart so if you can um, you know imagine with me the spirit it's it's like a lamp okay and when god communicates to the spirit it's like he's lighting up the lamp so that's how that's how the the communication is you know god ministers to the spirit and it's like he is lighting up the lamp and the communication of god you know uh, again in the new testament in romans 8:16 we see that um, the spirit bears witness with our spirit so what what has the holy spirit chosen to minister to our spirit so bearing witness is again you know another way in which the holy spirit is communicating with a human spirit so we need to understand that there's a lot that the spirit can receive 
the way it has been designed the spirit can receive from the spirit realm or you know if you just want to say from god because we know the bible says god is a spirit and so the way god has chosen to minister to us is spirit to spirit his spirit to our spirit so sometimes we may not even have the vocabulary to explain how god spirit is communicating with us but that's where it's actually happening you know spirit to spirit the spirit of the man is the lamp of the lord and he lights it up and therefore uh, the when we begin to be sensitive about the things that god can in you know we use words like impact minister uh, speak okay um whatever god is releasing into our spirit when we begin to be sensitive to that you know we this whole aspect of walking with the walking with the in the spirit and all um, it, it begins to make sense to us because we recognize you know it's no longer just me and my uh, like my 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 suke my my psychology my soul her part uh, of who i am but i can be led spirit to spirit you know through what god is uh, telling me now let's also understand that the spirit part of us though um Uh, we we have an understanding of the capacity of the spirit uh, from the scriptures we i don't think we fully know you know the the design and the capabilities of the human spirit but you know we can use to the extent that uh, we have revelation from god's word we know that the spirit has at least five senses you know if not more at least five senses just like our um body uh, you know we body we we can uh, feel we can see we can hear we can taste we can smell you know five senses that we uh, can sort of easily grasp in the same way in our spirit man there are these cap the, the capability to feel to see to hear to taste and smell now i'll tell you why uh, understanding this is very important because from our um, you know regular way of doing life even the believers okay somehow we we um, limit ourselves and you know we say things like i can't hear from god or um, i don't know what god is saying i can't sense it but you know what all of us have the human spirit which has the ability the capability so uh, if you want to put it this way by by design we are all capable of hearing from god and a lot now how we develop this the ball is in our court but by design if you recall jesus said sheep hear my voice it's as simple as that holy spirit speaks and we we you know sometimes we say i i know i know that i know that i know how i can't explain but i know so the holy spirit communicates with the human spirit or the bigger spirit uh, in, we are talking more in context of that and uh, so i'm here, i'm here to tell each of us that you are hearing from god whether you you affirm it acknowledge it or not and you can you will hear from god okay because that's the way you have been designed okay and the human spirit has senses like the uh, physical you know part of us now i'll just uh, quickly touch on the senses we have quite an elaborate explanation here in our notes but uh, you could please turn uh, if you have your uh, physical you know hard copy of the book or um, just a moment i'll give you the page number so in chapter 9 143 is uh, the number on the pdf it could be different in the printed book 
but uh, you could be certain that you have um, uh, a picture here or a you know like a like a diagram that explains the way God's communication is processed uh, by the human spirit. So if you can quickly turn to that uh, image, that would be helpful. Let me see if I can project it for us here. I think I can. Okay, so yes, you can see it now. Um, and uh, if you notice, you know, we have spirit, soul, body, what I've been sharing, you know, the spirit bears with our witness with our spirit, Proverbs 20, 27, the spirit of the man is the lamp of the Lord. And then the soul, where you have the, your mind, will and emotions, and the body, which is the outer part of us. The spirit is what primarily communicates with God and has senses just like our human senses. Feel, see, hear, taste and smell just the way our body can. Now, why are we saying that it has uh, all these senses? Because we have instances in scripture that, you know, clarify that the body, the spirit can do all of this. So if you recall, you know, when it comes to feeling, Feeling, I, I sense in my spirit, I feel in my spirit. In the spirit, if you go back to the book of Acts, you know, there are occasions where uh, Paul was, he was stirred up in his spirit. Okay? He was uh, provoked in his spirit. You know, when he went to um, Athens, he was there um, en route to a certain place and then went to Athens and he happened to see the place uh, that you know they had no knowledge of God. He was really provoked. He was provoked in his spirit. Is that to say that he got really angry in the soul part of him? No, because scripture says that he was, he was provoked in his spirit. So there is a feeling in the spirit. When Paul was about to be killed, caught and tried and killed, in um, you know he would be caught in Jerusalem and then his his uh, journey would begin to Rome and so on. Uh, we see that he felt bound in the spirit. He felt bound in the spirit as if he knew the trials that were awaiting him. So there was a communication from the Holy Spirit about what is going to unfold. Ezekiel, Ezekiel has this um, account where he senses bitterness when, when he eats the scroll, like, you know, there, there is a, a sense that, that he has and you know, he, he also experiences heat uh, within. So through all this, we can recognize that there are people who are testifying to a sense of feeling in the spirit um, and you know we talk about the peace of god may the peace of god uh, fill fill our hearts let rule and reign in our hearts what is that peace is also something that we sense or the joy of the lord is your strength we sense joy in our spirit man now it can be aligned to our circumstances, or it can be in contradiction to our circumstances. But there is a unique sense that the spirit has. Uh, and and uh, you know, that is, is telling us that we are capable of experiencing these things, sensing these things in our spirit man. Now, the spirit also has the capacity to see. Now, if we go back to uh, what we said about prophets of the Old Testament, there are accounts like Amos. He was shown, uh, you know, an image. He was shown uh, a basket of fruit. Uh, so there, there are these images that that uh, prophets saw. No wonder they were called as the seer prophets uh, as well. So the spirit man can pick up images, and that would be. God's communication or dreams, 
there can be dreams that people have if you go back uh, joseph and pharaoh had dreams he picked up some communication in his spirit from god you uh, look at nebuchadnezzar he had dreams you had the prophet of god you know, who, who could um, uh, share about their dreams so god can speak through dreams so it when you say image now an image can be a stationary one off uh, picture or it can be a series of pictures you know the way you have illustrations made into uh, uh, um, all your animation pictures and then kind of the motion picture uh, that you can create out of a uh, stationary images so in the same way god could communicate through one image or you can actually see something unfolding before uh, arise if you recall peter uh, when when he was Uh, in Acts ten, uh, when he was in a trance, he saw um, a sheet come down from heaven, and he saw animals of all sorts on that sheet. So, what is that? It's more like a motion picture, you know, which he is seeing. So, who is seeing this? Is it the physical person? Now, yes, sometimes the physical uh, part of us can pick up spiritual information. he okay, like the donkey you know the donkey could perceive like now let's not go into uh, the spirit of a donkey and all that but you know for whatever reason um, animals also we've seen in in uh, scripture that they do have whenever at at some points they are open to the spirit realm okay they have some sensitivity uh, but you see through the natural eyes eli elisha is a good example you know elisha he prays for gehazi and he prays and he says lord open his eyes and gehazi goes and he stands up on the on the mountain first he is scared by the the uh, you know multitude of forces that had gathered against elisha uh, you know around the mountain but when elisha prays he sees the spiritual the heavenly hosts who are um, and uh, you know he is comforted by that but how does he actually see he doesn't pray close his eyes and then in the spirit realm see um, the heavenly hosts surrounding the mountain but he actually goes up there and he has a view and he's able to see through his natural eye okay so sometimes the natural senses can also um uh, work as an extension of our spiritual senses but primarily our spiritual senses pick up these things um and uh, you know visions we we've, we've seen that there can be visions that people have now people have the question when do you see these images do you see them when you are awake or when you are asleep so you see visions uh, again people have come up with all kinds of classifications closed eye visions uh, or visions of the night which are called as dreams so you you can either be awake and alert when you're having a vision or you can you can be um, asleep when you're having a vision or you can be in a trance meaning you're not conscious you're not in control when you're having a vision so uh, your physical state can be different but still god can communicate now uh, again vision is is more like uh, a a motion picture you know that that you are see um then one could have uh, an out of body experience okay so ezekiel you know talks a lot about that um, you know i was i was uh, taken in in the spirit to here and there so something like an out of body experience Mm, uh so you know you you see that the spirit has the capability of seeing okay now coming to hearing from god uh, yes the spirit can hear um audibly from god now samuel is your best example where god spoke to samuel uh, you know he could hear samuel samuel and then you know eli guides him on what to do next but in general uh we may many people out of experience you know what people share the audible voice of god uh those kind of experiences are fewer you know when, when people share that with us so uh, what we are saying is generally we would hear from god uh his voice minus the sound okay so how does that look 
it may look like um, uh, seeing a word. Yesterday, uh, I think on the chat, somebody said, I see the word power. So it's the sense of hearing. They heard God say power minus the sound. Or I don't know whether they heard the sound also. But generally, that's how it is. And uh, you know, if you recall, we've, we've talked about this with your batch. I remember we said uh, uh, in Acts 8, you have Philip. When God speaks to Philip and says, um, overtake the chariot. So it can be a word, power, or you see that there's a sentence. You know, the sentence is, overtake the chariot. So I could see a sent. I could pick up a sentence in my spirit. Um, Fear not, for I am with you. A scripture just jumps up in my spirit. Now what is that? God is speaking and my sense of hearing is activated. Uh, then um, you know, could even be a couple of sentences when you have uh, Peter, uh, same Acts chapter 10, when uh, 9 and 10, when God is speaking to him about uh, opening up to the Gentiles. Peter hears this from God. God says, okay, you will see three men come. Um, uh, don't ask anything. Don't question anything. Just go. Wherever they, they take you, you go. So a couple of sentences Peter hears in his spirit. So this is the way in which God can uh, minister to our hearing capacity. So we might have a word or a sentence or a few sentences or, you know, I've talked about how there are times when we could receive an entire, you know, section of a book or an entire book or songs in our spirit. Uh, so, you know, when we become eager for things like this, we will start to flow in it. I remember when we had our uh, Bible college in person um, on campus, uh, you know, sessions, uh, we had the supernatural hour from 12 to 1 every day and people would be encouraged to minister through the gifts of the spirit. So at that point, um, there were so many students who wrote songs. You know, one particular girl, I don't know the number, but in a matter of a few months, 25 songs, and she was from Punjab. So some of the songs were in Hindi and you know uh, her own language. So she wrote those songs. I remember there was uh, one of our students from another country and uh, she uh, started writing poetry and she even um, started a blog uh, uh, because she wanted to put it up. Uh, her regular and I think she continues to to put her poems out but these are all poems and words that she has received uh, you know from God as she's praying and ministering to the Lord so we can hear from God words uh, sentences paragraphs uh, and even you know whole content we can receive and we can release that so you see the spirit has that capacity and we just have to um, uh, keep asking the Lord. Okay, taste. Taste is also mentioned here. Taste is uh, when we're told in the book of Psalms, you know, taste and see that the Lord is good. How can you taste God? <laughs> you know, that you can't, you, how do you grasp it? The spirit has a capacity. So even Ezekiel in his account, when he says, okay, I ate that, it was sweet. Or I felt, um, you know, tastes like that. So the spirit man mm, has that sense. You know, sometimes we say, I was worshipping and I could, I could sense the sweet presence of the Lord. Now, it could be our feeling part of the spirit or it could also be the taste that you really uh, remember uh, what it tastes like. Okay, or the word of God what it tastes like. So our spirit has the capability of taste, smell. You know? um, uh, we are the, the fragrance of the Lord. That's what scripture says. So we go about spreading. the aroma. We are the aroma of the Lord. So there is a sense of smell. Okay? And even when we are casting out spirits, you know, sometimes we would say uh, a person, uh, I don't know if you've had this experience, we're ministering to somebody and uh, like a foul spirit uh, where we are smelling. You know, I've, I've had that experience. Person smells fine in the natural, but when you're casting out a demon spirit, you, know, you have a foul smell uh, and you know that there is the presence of a demon spirit. So things like that. So basically your spirit is so activated, so alert, developed 
that you're, you're learning to live more by the things that are perceived in the spirit than the uh, other parts of us. Now, this is not to say that the other parts of us are not important. They are very, very important, very important because it's when we maintain, uh, you know, our soul aligned to the word of God that I've been saying process, process, right? So what is the process? We can reason, analyze, determine the action required. You no, know, we can receive. Okay, I'm receive, I'm hearing this in the spirit. Now my rational part will say, what does the word of God say? Okay, I go back to some scriptures. Did Jesus have this experience? Did Peter have that experience? Did Paul have the experience? So I'm rationalizing, you know, I'm analyzing. And I say, okay, yeah, I can find at least two of these scriptures that affirm that this is from God. And so I can determine action. Okay, fine. You know, I'm going to act on this or God is going to do this in my life. Uh, but if that's not the case, then the soul part of me will help me to reject that word. You know, I would say that, hey, this is not in scripture. So I'm not going to take this uh, as God speaking to me. It must be my own um, intellect it must be uh, you know sometimes uh, even satan can can put suggestions in our minds so we can reject it and we can take every thought captive okay so the soul part of us is very important and which is why developing ourselves as a whole person uh, uh, you know becomes crucial so maintaining that health uh, and and finding healing for even emotional issues and things like that uh, is important so soul will help us reason analyze determine and obviously, you know, we're living here on the earth and uh, uh, God, we don't see him doing things like, you know, taking the gospel out, making disciples through angels or some other spirits. He's given us a body and we're here and we need this body to do God's work. So uh, the body is also very important and we have to take care of the body. Um, and when it comes to manifesting the gifts of the spirit or hearing from god the body is very helpful it, it it lets you swing into action and sometimes what you are sensing in the spirit you pick it up in the body okay um i just uh, stop the screen share here and uh, yeah uh, i don't know if you've had that experience but you know sometimes you sense it like a tingling sensation or you're in the presence of god worshiping um, you feel cold on, on your physical body or you feel heat on the body. Or I remember once uh, I was praying for, uh, this was children's church, and I was praying for one of the, the boys there. And I just laid my hands on him and I could feel like a feather uh, moving on my fingers. And I didn't know how to interpret it. So I just prayed for some more time uh, and I, I got the interpretation. The interpretation was the Lord... Uh, the Lord is touching your fingers and uh, he is making you skillful with your fingers. Uh, and, and the thing is, he was, uh, he was a keyboard uh, player until today, you know, that uh, he's, he's one of our, he's in our worship team and he leads. So it amazes me because I have no idea you know, what, what he's capable of. But I picked it up, not so much from inside, but outside because when I was praying, I could feel like a feather moving on my fingers. So we can also be very sensitive in the physical, you know, in our body. Sometimes you can sense it. You know, God is touching. Um, I'll just tell one more uh, incident of the physical and, and close. Uh, this was early morning. I was preparing for the Sunday service. Uh, so I was just going over my notes uh, early in the morning. And at that time, I finished going through it. And before I closed... Uh, my paper and I, I put it aside, uh, my eyes started burning, but I had had a very good night's rest. So I knew that this is not normal. You know, why, why am I feeling a burning in my eye? It started and it stopped. And at that moment, I picked it up. Hey, God is trying to say something. And so that morning when I went to minister in, uh, in the service, the end of the service, we, you know, share words of knowledge and things like that. So I said that, as someone is going through um, uh, like a burning sensation and then somebody uh, told me that they were going through that and they had seen the doctor many times without any uh, resolution but you know long story short after the word of knowledge went out the burning suddenly stopped 
Okay, so uh, I, you know, and when words are released, I don't know about others, but I am the most amazed because, uh, in a way, I have nothing to do with what has happened except you know working like a postman. You get the message, you deliver it sincerely. That's all. And you, when you hear what God has done, you're like, wow, that is amazing. That is so uh, amazing. Okay, so we'll we'll get into this a little more in the next session. So let's just pray and close. Um, uh, can I request uh, oh, anyone actually? Christopher, could you please uh, close with a word of prayer, if you don't mind? Okay, I'm not sure if uh, he can hear me. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, Christopher, please. Yes. Um, uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the session that we've just uh, uh, we just um, uh, finished, and um, we thank you, Lord, for all the insights you've given us. We ask you to give us all your grace and blessings throughout the rest of the day, so that we can apply some of these some of these learnings. And uh, Lord Jesus, uh, be with us throughout the day. Keep us under your uh, protective. Uh, uh, under your protection and um, bless Pastor Nancy for all the all the insights she has uh, provided us uh, in this session. Um, we um, we ask you to continue to um, bless us, keep us in good health, and um, and uh, be with us uh, throughout the day. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Uh, have a have a great weekend. Thank, thank you, Pastor. Thank you, thank you. God bless you too. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you. Bye.